All righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Growl webinar series. Hi, let's get big waves. So welcome to our first issue or first session of the Growl webinar series. We're here with faculty from the College of Arts and Sciences Humanities Division. And we've got several students and some family members joining us today. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Ella Smith Justice here in just a second, but let me get started by doing some housekeeping notes. Um, we, we will have, I'm sure many of you are, or most of you are familiar with kind of Zoom rooms and how this kind of kind of goes now, that that's how we're mainly communicating in groups. So if you will stay on mute when you're not talking, that would be good. Um, use the chat feature. I'll be monitoring the chat on the side for asking questions. So ask questions um, at any time and we'll make sure we got plenty of time to answer those um, throughout. We will do some brief introductions around the room with faculty. Students, if you want to, if you want to chime in and introduce yourself and what field you're interested in, absolutely, we'll do that following faculty introductions. But if you want to stay off screen and kind of just listen and take it all in, you're welcome to do that too. Um, like I said, use the chat feature. We'll go through that and have some question and answers. But this is conversational. This is time for you guys, um, for us to meet you and for you guys to know a little bit more about our, our programs here on campus and to meet us and possibly see our pets and children. So let's we'll see how that is. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Ella. Um, if you don't care to go ahead, Ella, and go ahead and get us started around the, around the room. Okay, hola a todos, bienvenidos. If you couldn't tell, I'm the Spanish professor here at the university. My name is Dr. Ella Smith Justice. And it's so good to see all of the faces and, and all of the students who are going to join us at the University of Pikeville. That's great. We're looking forward to having you in our courses and seeing you on campus and, and doing all those great things. And I'm so glad to see my colleagues in humanities as well. So um, I think we're gonna talk about our program some more here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to go ahead and give my colleagues in the humanities an opportunity to introduce themselves as well. So I'm just going to go in the order that I see folks on my screen. And that just so happens to begin with Dr. Browning. So Dr. Browning, if you will introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm James Browning. I teach religion, which means I teach classes in biblical studies and world religions and religion and contemporary culture. Good to see everyone. Thank you, sir. And Professor Kowalik. Hi everybody, um, I'm Pat Kowalik and I am part of the art department and uh, specialize in the drawing and painting areas of our curriculum. It's good to see you all. Thank you so much, Professor Carroll. Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Carroll. I'm an Associate Professor of Art here at the University of Pikeville. It's really nice to meet you all today. Um, I teach uh, three-dimensional art and sculpture. I also teach uh, design, which is how things look and how to make things and control how they look. Um, and I'd love to talk to you all about art. It's really nice to meet you all today. Sorry there. Thank you so much, Patra. Dr. Sloan. Hi, I'm Amanda Sloan. I teach in the English department. I work primarily with our freshman writing program, uh, but I also teach some other courses in the English program. Some uh, I've taught creative writing, I've taught literary criticism. Um, I'm also the director of first year experience. So I have the privilege to get to work with all of you in a different way too. So um, I'm excited to get to know you guys. Thank you very much. Chaplain Music. Good afternoon, everybody. Rob Music here, uh, campus chaplain. So that looks a little bit outside of humanities, but when I'm in the humanities department, uh, I teach religion along with Dr. Browning. So, hello. Thank you very much. And now we'll hear from Professor Willard. There we go. <laughs> I'm Kim Willard and I am teaching theater at the University of Pikeville. Very excited for you guys to come and maybe experience some theater on stage, backstage, or in the audience. Thanks for being here. 
Oh, there we go. Thank you so much, Kim. And Dr. Phillips, please. How's it going, everybody? My name is Dr. Phillips. I'm the, I oversee the instrumental music program at the U Pike campus. Uh, that involves our wind band program, marching band program, our U Pike rocks program, and our jazz program. Uh, all of those programs include uh, students of uh, all different majors, from nursing to education. And uh, we have plenty of scholarships available. So if anybody's interested in jumping on board, we are excited to talk to you. Great to meet you. Thank you so much. Dr. Westgate. Unmute. Yep. Hi, I'm Dr. Westgate. I um, teach music here at the university. I'm program coordinator for music here at the university. I'm also accompanist for the choir here at the university. Um, I teach classes in music appreciation and music history. And some of you will be taking those as a gen ed requirement classes and things. So I'm sure I'll see you in classes. Um, I'm, we, we too, in the vocal music side, offer uh, private lessons in piano and voice and instrumental lessons. You can sign up and get college credit. We accept beginners at all levels. And um, also uh, the choir, uh, the band, while the band does have uh, scholarship money, as does the choir have scholarship money. Our choral person is going to be Dr. Eric Rutherford in the fall. He is not with us today. You can find him in email or you can contact and talk to me if you'd like to talk about uh, setting up a choral audition for a possible scholarship or just entry into the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Professor Reed, please. Hey, my name is Andrew Reed and I'm over the Film and Media Arts Program here at UPI. Uh, we teach students how to make films, uh, fictional and documentary, but we also teach them news production. Uh, we have a student newscast. We have an annual film festival. Uh, we also train students in digital effects, uh, Photoshop, After Effects, all of that kind of uh, software. Uh, and so a lot of our uh, students aren't necessarily filmmakers. They want to go into broadcast television. They're interested in, in uh, promoting uh, business online uh, and handling social media for, uh, for different entities. So uh, we have a lot of people in our program that are just interested in in digital media and I welcome anyone that's wanting to know more we we also offer scholarships wonderful thank you all so much I believe I was scrolling through while I was listening to folks I believe that covers all of our faculty who are with us today am I missing anybody I didn't introduce myself well, I was going to say, Stephanie, I'm going to turn it back to Stephanie. Well, you know what? Actually, that was really a proper introdu introduction for me and my personality. <laughs> so and I'm Stephanie Stiltner. I'm the Director of Family Connections, and I primarily work with families of incoming um, students and current students, but I'm also a member of the orientation team and the growl team that um, works with first year students as you come on board and you, you and your family and help you get you ready this summer as we go through fall in that first year. So. Good to have you. And also, Ella, I forgot to mention uh, James and I's colleague, my wife, uh, Summer Music, and she is, the Bible would say, great with child, so she is uh, not with us this moment, but she also sends her greetings. And I think it was very good that you did that, friend. <laughs> yeah. And please give, please give Summer air regards. And tell her that we miss her. We're also missing um, Dr. Freeman, who is the chair of the division. She wasn't able to be with us this afternoon, but she sends her her greetings and and is looking forward to having you all in her classes. We got a few other humanities colleagues who couldn't join us, but um, we're glad to to see everybody who could be with us today. So, so Stephanie, what are we? Well, to well or I was want to see if there's any students that wanted to introduce themselves. Um, you're welcome to do that. Anybody want to chime in? Raise your hand or wave or whatever you want to do or just unmute and shout your name katie abby abby sorry all right sorry um my name is abby mead and i'm going to be majoring in elementary education good anybody else okay so we'll go ahead. Um, Ella, do you want to get started with a question? Um, just go ahead and start a question. We can just start hearing from our faculty and then I'll just kind of watch the chat room and watch for questions from our audience, if that's okay. Well, that sounds very good. Um, 
what I think I would like to start us out with today is uh, for us to take a couple of moments each uh, to talk about what makes our program special in the humanities. Why are the humanities important? So we had Abby with us, for example, who said that she's going to uh, pursue elementary education, which is um, with our colleagues in, in education. But why do the humanities matter for a variety of uh, majors that we have at the university? How can we complement those majors? What skills do we take uh, away from courses in the humanities? So, and Dr. Browning, if you'd like to, to kick in with a comment, I know you have one. Okay, well, I think people have a lot of stereotypes about the field of religion. So the academic study of religion is not preaching. Uh, so sometimes people are scared to teach religion classes because they're afraid someone will preach at you, but that's not how it works. We're, we teach in the humanities, and so our classes are taught not through lecture, but by active discussion, and we read texts and talk about them, and we bring in interesting speakers and have them uh, talk to us and have student dialogue with them. A lot of active learning, a lot of experiential learning where we go places. Uh, I do a lot of storytelling in classes. Uh, each of us uses interesting teaching techniques. And I would think one of the soft skills you get out of a religion class is the ability to uh, discuss with people of different viewpoints and appreciate those viewpoints and explore and form your own perspective. And then also we have presentations in our classes. So you learn presentation skills in a safe place. Uh, and I'm gonna kick it down to Rob Music because Rob handles all of our experiential learning. So what are some places that we've taken students, Rob? Yeah, we like to travel. So we'd like to help our students see different things uh, from different types of worship services or worship spaces. So for example, uh, maybe you grew up in Eastern Kentucky and you really haven't been to a Hindu temple or uh, a mosque. So we will take you to places there. Uh, also give you a chance to eat some great uh, ethnic food. Uh, take you to maybe conferences where they talk about the differences between or the, the, uni the unity of science and religion and some great questions that you may explore. We also may invite you to go with us on a trip where you go out of the country or to a new place in our own country and engage with people in service projects or listening projects. So we really want to, uh, when you come into our classes, you are also uh, one of the lively people who help us learn and teach. So if you have an idea and you say, hey, I would love for some students to go to X, Y, and Z because that's a moment for you to make your voice heard and help us to help you. Awesome, thank you, gentlemen. How about, let's hear from Art. Uh, Pat or Pager, would either of you like to tell us what makes the art program unique? I think I'm going to step up. <laughs> um, we have, we're a small program, and so we deal with uh, small groups of people at any one time. But the advantage of that is that we can deal with you individually and talk to you about your vision and where you want to go and how you want to problem solve. And um, what images you might be interested or media you might be interested in creating with. Um, we also have a fairly good gallery program, which maybe um, Petra would like to talk to about. So we actually have two different galleries. We have the Weber Gallery, which is in Record Memorial, and we have professional artists who exhibit absolutely amazing and beautiful shows. Um, students get to meet those artists and talk to them ask them questions about uh, their ideas of art and maybe their processes of art. Um, we also, we have a student gallery that we show off our really, really amazing student art. And our art majors, when they become seniors, actually also do an individualized senior exhibition um, in the Weber Gallery, which is our professional gallery, and have PR and create PR that is put out by the school. So, it's kind of a wonderful program because you get to see the gallery. And if you have work study, uh, we also have work study positions that enable students to work in the gallery, has gallery monitors and work with those artists in the creation and the putting up of those exhibitions. So if you have any questions about uh, the galleries, please contact me. I'd love to talk to you about them. 
Thank you so much. And how about English? Dr. Sloan, can you tell us a little bit about the English program and, and what that, it's more than grammar classes. What's yeah, involved in I, that? I do want to talk about uh, both sides of that, though, the writing program and the English classes that you can take. Um, because everybody's going to take a writing course, right? You have to have a writing course uh, for your general education requirements. And if you haven't taken a dual credit class, then that writing course is going to be writing 118. And one of my favorite things to do first day of class is say, um, raise your hand if you love writing and raise your hand if you hate writing. And there, there's no in between for most people. It's always one or the other. Um, and a lot of times students will come in and they'll say, oh God, no, don't make me write. Um, but I love to watch that develop because through our writing courses, um, it's not just grammar. It's not just um, write to a specific form. You really learn how to develop your voice. You learn to develop um, what those thoughts are and those opinions are that you've had. And you learn how to find information um, and then express it. And so that development is my favorite thing, to be able to watch students who might say, mm, I don't really like writing, go to writing a piece that they feel really passionate about by the end of the semester. Um, last semester, my courses for their final, um, they made interactive websites with the research they had collected. So it's a whole lot more than just writing. Um, so I do think those skills translate to every class you're gonna take. You're gonna need those reading and writing skills. And then on the English side, so you have the writing side and the English side. English side, um, you can take literature classes and again, a lot of students say, oh no, we have to read. Um, but in reading, I love to say that you get to study everything. You study humans, you study culture, you study religion, you study history, because all of that comes together in literary form. And so you take so much out of the human experience from a piece of literature. One of my favorite classes to teach is Appalachian literature. And in that course, our students get to Skype or have classroom visits with authors that are working in the field today. So students get to really see what goes into that writing process, take away um, you know, what the field of literature is doing for the world today. So I think it's really exciting. Any literature class is gonna enrich you personally and work toward any major that you go for. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I know we've heard a little bit from uh, some of our other programs. Um, Dr. Westgate, if you'd like to talk about the music department just a little bit to, to give a little bit more information for our students. Sure. Glad to do that. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk with you just for a minute. Um, I don't know. Many of you are probably looking at majors and things like that for yourselves, but you also can do minors, a, um, you know, a minor area of study as part of your academic program. And we do offer a music minor. And in that minor, you can choose to uh, work on an instrument, uh, piano, voice, or even music history. If you, if you don't really feel inclined to play and perform, then um, you can study music and uh, the history of it. And you know that's a very interesting thing to do. Um, if you want to talk about our minor, um, you can feel free to contact me. My contact information is there. Um, secondly, I need to start a push for our ensembles. Um, getting involved in choir and band, well, that's a wonderful way to, to meet people, make friends, and become a part of a bigger picture and just be, you know, closer involved with the university. And it, it just makes everything more pleasant. So, you know, we have fall and spring concerts, we have small recitals throughout the semesters, all those things. And it's just a way of engaging your creative side. And also, um, you know, part of your undergraduate is study is to, to develop yourself as a critical thinker. And, you know, working in the arts, that's a, that's a great way to develop your creative side and your critical thinking skills. Um, so again, if there's any questions, um, I'm here. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Phillips, is there any further information you'd like to add about the band? Absolutely. Uh, the band program is a great opportunity to not only uh, express yourself instrumentally, whether you're a guitar player, if you read music and not read music, or if you're in your former band program, uh, whether it was middle school or high school, 
Uh, but it's also a great opportunity to support our athletic program as we are their uh, number one fan of uh, pepping them and being the soul of their crowd in our upcoming football games that hopefully we are hearing about from our athletic director uh, today or tomorrow. And uh, like I said, it's a great part, great opportunity to be a part of the football games and basketball games, uh, especially with our upcoming situation where we'll be able to be in the hopefully be the number one fan well, it, at those games. So uh, it's a lot of fun. Some things that we've also done uh, in the past, last year, uh, we performed at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, with all our groups. That was a lot of fun. We brought our honorary member, Mr. Rob Music. You know, the, his last name was his ticket in. Uh, and we just want to throw a, a, a hello out to him because he uh, has helped us so much here as we've uh, progressed. Uh, again, if you have any interest in uh, the university bands, I put the information over on our chat area. Uh, we have uh, four staff members that are involved in the band area, and any one of them uh, can get in you can get in touch with us by just going to bands at upike.edu or check us out at, on Facebook uh, at the University of Pikeville Bands, uh, which is usually very active. Uh, as far as what we have done, you can go through the history of what we have accomplished, see a lot of pictures from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and from games. Uh, and again, I think one of the, my favorite things about the university bands is it has such a diverse amount of students involved. Uh, and it's a great opportunity, especially in the arts, whether it's theater or choir or art and uh, otherwise, to not just get involved in people in your major, but to have a really diverse opportunity of networking with a lot of different people uh, and different thoughts uh, uh, throughout campus. So I uh, look forward to hearing from you and upike bands uh, or bands at upike.edu. Uh, looking forward to meeting you. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate that. And Professor Reed, can you tell us a little bit more about the FMA program? Hey, uh, yeah, so probably the neatest thing I think for the average student about the FMA program is the versatility. Uh, we really try to have a program that ha offers a variety of opportunities. For example, we had a class uh, this past semester where students learn how to create a comic book. They never done a comic before, uh, but we walked them through the digital workflow and we had a number of students make a 22 page comic book uh, in the semester. Um, our monthly uh, student broadcast, students have an opportunity to anchor. They also have an opportunity to serve as a reporter uh, with our partnership with Pike TV, which is a, a community television station. Students can uh, participate in filming local events. They can film uh, football games, uh, basketball games, a lot of uh, versatility there. We also have a uh, annual film festival, and uh, we typically will have about 20 plus filmmakers from around the country come out to that film festival, and students have an opportunity to see their films, interact with them. Uh, we also are a participant in the South Arts of uh, Southern Circuit Film Series. And so we have six documentary films and the directors come to campus every semester uh, to showcase their work and talk with students. Um, additionally, if you're looking at trying uh, an FMA class, I recommend our Intro to Film and Media Arts class because it's really uh, a sample platter of what our program is all about. You'll get to uh, learn how to make short videos. You'll get to learn how to create a small website. You'll learn a little bit about HTML code. Uh, you'll do some audio editing. Uh, it's, it's really about getting your feet wet in digital media production more so than the study of film. We do that, but it's just a part of our program uh, because we're trying to meet a variety of needs for our students who are looking to build up their digital skills as they prepare for a career. Thank you so much, sir. And if I may ask Professor Willard in theater, if she'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, the theater program. Unmute. There we, there we go. There My we mouse go. was not mousing. I got it. Okay. <laughs> so hi, y'all. Um, theater does a lot of things. Um, I just came out of a, a webinar just like 20 minutes ago. So I'm still kind of really fixated on that. That is dealing with creating theater in an anti-racist environment. I know that's, that's something that is on everybody's mind a little bit right now or a lot. And I am excited about the possibilities of that. So that's kind of where my brain is right now. But just to, to recap some things that we have done in theater, um, 
we have traveled to Edinburgh to the largest theater festival in the world and presented an original play written for our students there. Um, we travel yearly to SETC, which is the Southeastern Theater Festival. It moves around to different cities, but it brings in artists from all over the world um, with classes and productions and all kinds of options um, for people to attend there. So students go yearly to that with us. We've gone to New York for kind of a beginning in the business of theater um, one week workshop where we attended some Broadway shows and also met with industry professionals who helped students understand how to package themselves, if you will, as theater artists, dealing with things like headshots and resumes and audition techniques, um, all of those kind of nuts and bolts things. Going forward, I'm, I'm learning everything that I can about how theater can be presented on different platforms like Zoom, where we are right now. So that'll be something that we'll play with um, in the fall in addition to live things. And I'm working with actually um, the Black Student Union to create a performance for this fall that will be a multimedia experience that, that could help shed some light on what's going on in America and how we can best embrace our issues <laughs> and we all have them and where we stand on the subject of racism so i'm pretty excited about that we produce two shows every year at least um, sometimes three if we do a smaller one we've done student written shows um, we will continue to do that we offer classes and all kinds of theater experiences and you also can do directed studies if there's something that we don't offer that you're super passionate about so I'm excited. You can be any major to be a part of this. Oh, also, as um, Dr. Westgate said, we also have a theater minor. So if you want to add that to your arsenal of skills, being in theater, on stage, backstage, even in the audience, gives you empathy, the ability to speak your truth, organizational skills. I mean, if any of you have done theater, you know, like being on your feet in the moment live. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you have to be able to do at the same time. Multitasking is definitely a thing you can learn in theater. So we're just really excited that you all are coming to have new bears. If you're scared to get on stage, at least come work backstage or take a theater class or be in the audience and, and learn and be a part of what's going on at UPike. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Willard. I think I hit all the the areas in our division correct did i leave anybody out i don't think we missed anybody so what i'd like to do really quickly is i like to talk about spanish right spanish is uh one of the most commonly spoken languages in the united states and around the world and you're very fortunate that at the university of pikeville you can minor in spanish i'm working um, with some other faculty colleagues on designing a certificate in spanish for the professions hopefully coming up uh, in this next year or so so a lot of opportunities and really, regardless of whatever you want to study at the University of Pikeville, regardless of your major, regardless of your professional area of study, Spanish is a perfect complement for you. Um, in 2018, just a couple of years ago, the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages uh, worked with a research firm called Ipsos, and they conducted a study of 1,200 employers in the United States. And they found out that nine out of 10 of those participants depend on employees who have skills in languages other than English. So namely Spanish, right? 56% uh, said they thought that that need would increase in the next five years. So we're already two years into that. So now it's the time to get into the game, right? And to study Spanish. Also one in three of those participants said that in their um, employment area and their business and their corporation and whatever their their business was that they had a language gap among their employees so that there were language needs there there were customers that they could have worked with their clients that they could have worked with but they didn't have employees who spoke the language right and that uh one in four of those participants said they'd actually lost business due to that so just imagine that if you learn spanish or if you increase your spanish language skills just how much you can add to your resume when you uh, decide to move out into the professional world from your college studies. Um, we work on conversational skills in Spanish. We work on professional skills, presentational skills. At the University of Pikeville, if you take at least two courses in, a, in Spanish or in a world language, and, and we're Spanish at the University of Pikeville, um, that will fulfill the requirement for a Bachelor of Arts degree. So you either get a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science, 
for most degrees. Um, a lot of our courses count for the cultural and global place requirement in the general education curriculum. And then also um, I'm teaching a course for the first time in the fall that I'm really excited about that um, applies to the engaging your world component of the general education uh, curriculum. It's Spanish 350, which sounds really high. And the title is Rojo, Blanco y Azul, Latinos in the USA, but it's taught in English. And so all you have to do is be a sophomore. Now I know you're freshmen, you're incoming freshmen for the most part. Uh, if you're gonna be a sophomore, catch me. Um, but I'm gonna teach it every other year. So I'll teach it this fall and then two falls after that. So 2020, 2022 will be the next iteration of that. Uh, one thing we like to do in the program is when we're not in the midst of a pandemic, in September, in mid-September, in Lexington, they always have a Festival Latino. And so uh, through experiential learning, we're able to take a, a group of students to that to try all kinds of great food, to uh, hear music, to just get to be able to go out in the city a little bit and explore and meet people and see flags and culture and just all the great things, right? Just, just be immersed. So it's a really, a really great time. Um, I wanted to let you know that our courses, our program is actually in the midst of a transition before it used to take folks forever to complete the Spanish program because a lot of folks are new. We accept newbies. I was a newbie when I started uh, learning Spanish in um, Southwestern Virginia. And uh, so we definitely accept newbies. You can start with Spanish 111, which is beginning Spanish one, or you can take our placement test, which is online, really easy to take. You can contact me for details and I'll happily give you that information if you've had some, some advanced study in the language. Um, but our courses are, um, we started this last year online and they're in eight weeks. So in one semester you could take um, a minimum of two language courses. So you could actually complete our minor in um, at least two years instead of the three and four years that it was taking folks to do a minor or a major previously. Um, so definitely excited about, about that. So if you have any questions, definitely I put my contact information in the, uh, in the chat. So please hit me up. So I'm very grateful to you all for joining us today. And I was being kind of cheesy and I was writing down all the programs that we have in the humanities. And I came up, you know, we talk about learning strategies and the best way to retain information. And I came up with the acronym HEARTS. Oh my goodness, because we're in the humanities and everything comes from the heart. Am I right? Yes. And so heart, here we go. Hearts for humanities, right? We have English. We have art, which includes film and media arts. See what I did there. Religion, theater, and Spanish. And I don't think I left anybody out. I think that's all of us. So we're hearts, right? So um, we've got a lot of great programs. I'm very fortunate to work with a lot of wonderful colleagues who are very passionate about the areas that they teach and they're very excited about having you all. Oh my gosh, Dr. Westgate. Ah, I left out music. Dr. Westgate, <laughs> I've got to rework my acronym. I'm so sorry. I will fix that. It's no longer hearts. We'll figure something out. I'm so sorry, my apologies <laughs> this time. My yeah. heart, there we go, my heart, that works. <laughs> With the apostrophe in front of it, right? I'm so sorry. Now that I have completely messed that up, I'm gonna take this opportunity to introduce our Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Jennifer Dugan, so she can say hello and introduce herself and, and, and uh, tell us a little bit about herself. Well, hi everyone. I am so impressed with the passion of this group. You know, you really are the heart, the heart, the my heart of the arts and sciences. And, um, and also you're just really funny. And, um, you know, I got to thinking about career outcomes. You know, it's, uh, we're always wondering, you know, where is this degree going to get me? And it occurred to me that if you have to talk to somebody to fix your computer, or you have to go and deal with a medical issue, or you have to go and figure out some, you know, how to navigate through some complicated problem, you're likely going to be talking on the other line to somebody who has a degree in the humanities people who know how to solve problems, 
people who know how to communicate, whether it's in English or Spanish, people who understand uh, intercultural uh, communication and how to engage across difference. When you think about it, all of those are the skills that we need to succeed in any job, and they're exactly what employers are looking for. Uh, the additional uh, technical knowledge you need for any field, of course you'll pick that up at UPIKE. But I just really like to leave you with the message of any of the degrees and the majors and minors you've heard about here today are designed to prepare you for anything you want to go out and do. And we will help you articulate the value of what you gain while you're with us so that by the time you're ready to go out on the job market, you know how to represent yourself and you know how to uh, really just represent the, the value that you would bring to the organization. So I, I hope you take that to heart. And um, I want to thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, Dean Dugan. We're glad you could be with us today. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Stephanie. Hey, I got rid of the pup, so there we go. Trying to get her not to bark. Um, questions? Quest questions? Anybody have anything so far specifically? It could be about a major it could be about one of the individuals you just met it could be something funny interesting anything yeah, what i miss <laughs> oh that's okay that's a typical student question right there isn't it there we go We're i did I, I i knew it was that i knew this freshman orientation was at one and i just now remembered it you are, you are fine. You're absolutely fine. We, uh, this session is going to be recorded. So there'll be a link that we'll share with you guys the same way you found this link. You can find the link and you can go back and kind of watch. We are just introducing um, the faculty from the Division of um, Humanities within our College of Arts and Sciences. So uh -huh. just learning more about theater and music and art and English and religion and Spanish. So we're just we're just talking. This is all optional and we just wanted to be here and answer the questions for you guys and really we just wanted to meet you. That's why we're here. That's why we love growl. That's why we love orientation. Um, and since we couldn't meet in person, we just wanted we just wanted to meet students and get to know you guys. So we understand if you're cam camera shy. Um, I don't want to hop on. That's okay. But absolutely, you can you can go back and watch that first 30 minutes and you'll you'll catch right back up. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Dean Dugan, something we did have, Abby mentioned when she first, um, when we introduced ourselves, that she's going to be an education major. So mm -hmm. what, what would you say, liberal arts, she's going to be in education, so how do some of the um, courses in the general ed that are taught within the humanities, how do they kind of support her as a teacher? I saw her nodding when, when Kim was talking about theater, she's like, yes. Yes, theater, you have to be on your, think on your feet. Yes, you have to be able to speak in front of people. So she got that one. So, so what else, what else can help her within humanities to support her future career as a teacher? Okay, is that you, Abby, in you got your U-Pike t-shirt on? Yeah, hey, um, it's very nice to meet you. And thank you for your interest in both education and uh, the humanities. Um, on, on the sort of structural side of things, the uh, advisors in our education department have a wonderful curriculum map for you to follow that leaves open plenty of choice for what you want to take. So you could do theater to fulfill a general education, and that would also contribute to the various decisions that you can make about your education pathway. Um, so these aren't two separate and parallel things. We, we have a way to help you integrate them so you can follow your passions while you're earning your degree in education. And we'd be happy to kind of link you up with somebody in education, but you should probably also attend the growl that I think is on June 17th 
or our education people would be on a call just like this. And you know, you can find more out about the major and the flexibility that it, it allows students. Did you have any uh, anything you want to follow up with? No. Good. Anybody else want to jump in specifically for education? I know something that's um, that had we had we had a specific art teacher when I was in K twelve. Um, and now sometimes in elementary schools, we just don't have an art teacher that we get to go to that art class mm -hmm. and be taught by an art professional or a teacher that was professionally trained in art. So Pat and Petra, how can, how can an art class help her, no matter what she teaches, how can an art class help her be a better teacher and incorporate that in whatever she teaches and whatever grade she teaches? So Pat, are you, are, I can jump in. Um, so Abby, one of the things that can help with teaching are your visuals, right? So if you are teaching history, you might be showing visuals from history and probably some of those visuals will be artworks. They might be sculptures, they may be photo photographs, they could be paintings. Um, so those visuals can become part of your teaching, but art is, art is really, really contextual. You can't talk about art without talking about the world or the culture or the language or the time period within which that art was made. So there's a huge, huge connection between teaching anything and pulling in that art that is part of the context of that. I, don't, I hope that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Pat, do you have anything you might want to add to? Well, I think another strength of, of art is, is to see things from personal viewpoints. So it, it really introduces, encourages people to look at things in a different way or outside the box or um, just sort of problem solve in a way that is maybe unexpected. So it, it is um, just encourages you to have confidence in your thought process. And one other thing I'd love to add too is that the visual arts can also give a voice to somebody who maybe can't speak that voice or can't write that voice. So it gives a different way Hold for on. an interview. Talk there's someone talking. Um, I have a question for the okay. fast foot. Do yeah. we need 2019 or 2018 tax stub? You, for to file the FAFSA, you need your 2018 taxes to file for the 2020, okay. 2021. I'm talking to uh, the Archer coach right now, and we were trying to figure that out. So you're talking to Ellie? Yeah. Good. Yeah. The 2018. But you okay. can, um, I'm going to put an email address in the chat or send it to you, and you can email and they can answer your questions too. Well, that is right. the email for directly for financial aid. Okay. What other questions you may have? Do you have any other things uh, that you're getting ready to come to campus and thinking about all the things that's going on? Not real, not right now. What are you What are you thinking about majoring in? Have you thought about what courses? Uh, criminal justice. Okay. Well, I'll be right back. Let me go grab that real quick. Okay. He's awesome. Okay. So, um, any other questions from our audience? Any other students or families that are tuning in, you kind of want to chat? Lance, you want to say something? Uh, I'll just say who I am. And I'm, I'm Lance Stevenson. I'm from Powell County. Um, I'm majoring in pre-med. I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. Uh, I don't know really about how to go about that, honestly, about scheduling classes or anything like that. So I don't. We will, uh, yes, we will. Have you had your growl session yet in your growl course? I have. Okay, yeah. your advisor will be reaching out to you soon. And, okay. you, and your advisor will start talking about your schedule you'll make for your first semester. And then they'll talk about your, your academic plan. And we will have another one of these sessions. Um, I'm going to put out by the end of the week, we'll put out another a schedule. And there'll be faculty from, um, 
what is it, Dr. Dugan? It be from education. No, it, no, um, the natural sciences, math and natural sciences. So those are a lot of the pre-med oh, yeah. faculty in the biology and the chemistry areas. So tune back into that one too. But you'll need some of these courses that these folks teach for your general education. Yes. So you'll get to know all the. Uh, how do you all do your? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you get the question. Uh, how are the writing in the English section? How do you all do your writing? Is it based off informational facts or how do you all do that? With most of your writing context, your papers and stuff of that nature. So your first year writing course, Lance, is going to be writing 118. Um, that's for any student who hasn't had dual credit writing already. So when you come in, you'll take writing 118. And writing 118 is um, focused on a lot of 21st century writing skills. So not just traditional papers. Um, in this last semester, I taught a section where we did a theme of defining Appalachia. And the course is set up in four different modules. And in the first module, students got to do some field research, do some interviews, and they wrote profiles. Um, so it's more of a traditional kind of profile. And then we moved on to more uh, blog style writing. We made a website, they did research, they did annotated bibliographies, all the things you would think you would do in a normal class but also in interesting kind of innovative um, assignments that were not just traditional paper after paper after paper. And each section of Writing 118 has a different theme. So um, you could wind up with um, any kind of interesting things. I'm playing around for some for the fall. If you want to give me some suggestions, um, I'm open to, to hearing those. All righty, thank you. Hey Lance, I just also wanted to add you know, we're hearing a lot from our medical school on campus that that medical students really need training in how to communicate well, how to how to be ethical, you know, how to have a good rapport with students. And they're actually urging us to develop a closer tie with them. And this group here is really important for that because they want their students to know more, uh, not just about medicine as a technical field, but about being a good doctor who can make connections with his or her. Able to understand, I got you. So it'll, it'll really be important for you to kind of consider what this group has to offer as you think ahead to be you know, an, an orthopedic surgeon, which I think is an amazing goal. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. And I would just add, too, I think one of the beauties of our kind of how we tie all together is the development of empathy. Uh, you can see kind of right now in our world where there's so many people just not like not listening to each other, shouting each other down. And I really do think the humanities develops uh, kind of a, I mean we talked about a heart but really the ability to listen to hear stories and even I know Dr. Browning can talk to this more but particularly inside the, the medical world uh, ethics um, philosophy are real keys I know I, I help a, a lecture for the medical school where we talk about perspective and bias um, and that becomes really important more and more people at the medical school are saying you know kind of help us understand this Yeah, being able to understand other people's point of views, is that what you're starting to get? Yeah, gotcha. Absolutely, yeah. I always like to point out too that I have a friend um, who graduated from UPAC with an English degree and is now a pediatrician. <laughs> so she, she decided to go to med school after her undergrad um, and that English degree really helped her out on that. We talk about that quite a bit. Um, and that's true for a lot of the professional fields for law school and things like that, that the thinking and the writing and communication skills have all been really important in those fields. All right. Good. Thanks, Lance, for that question. That's, that's really, you kind of opened the door for these folks. I mean, it was like an edge of their seat because that is, 
That is the definition of liberal arts. That's the definition of why we piece everything together the way we do. And at the time, it may not, in a course, it may not make sense or you can't see the bigger picture of how you're going to use this down the road when you're studying a sculpture or reading about a certain religion and or how you kind of speak and communicate. But, but you know, especially in patient care, um, communication is key. You can, what it, because you you have your knowledge, but if your patient's not receiving that and there's a barrier, you you're, you all the knowledge that you have is not going to help heal that patient. So we are edge of our seats. They you know we talk about that quite a bit to kind of make sure that you understand where it fits in the big picture. So you you're the head of the game, my friend. Before you even get on campus, you're kind of seeing where this puzzle fits together. So you're you're ahead of the game. So any other questions? What are you thinking? I'm gonna have to hop off here soon. I've got a meeting with the with Coach Espinoza for track. Okay. Well, Lance, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. All righty, thank you. See ya. Nice to meet you all. You too, hon. Um, we got a question from Emily in the chat. Um, she's gonna be here in the fall. She wants to major in history and political science and minor in art. So there you go, ladies. Let's talk about that. And you even talked about history kind of so history political science and minor in art so let's throw it back to our art ladies and see what's up there hi emily how are you it's nice to meet you uh, my name is patrick carroll i'm an associate professor of art here i teach with professor pat kowalik um, and i'm really excited that you're interested in art and having an art minor here um, do you have anything in specific or the particular medias that you like to use if you want to put it in chat and you don't want to say it that's okay too or if you just want some general information about art i'm happy to talk about that too I'm glad you're doing great, Emily. I can see your chat. So, um, so art here at UPike, you know, we're, we're a, a smaller school and we have a smaller program, which lets us focus on students and we can have some really wonderful individual attention on students. So we have a really, really wonderful art gallery. Um, so we have professional artists that do exhibits. Of course, we are in a slightly changed world, uh, but we also have, uh, Student galleries and students have opportunities to exhibit work. We have drawing programs and sculpture. Um, I teach sculpture and design, which is kind of how things look and how they go together. Um, Pat, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you teach? Um, we have a um, series of three drawing program uh, classes that we take that start out from um, learning how to do things to how to get your vision across or how to get your ideas across. Uh, we do a lot of special topics classes also. Um, and a favorite of mine is making artist books. So you have that option of like um, both the three dimensional as well as the two dimensional and it's handheld and that's a favorite class of mine. And uh, Painter does a lot of different kinds of sculpture, um, special topics, classes. Um, do you have any idea what it is you want to do with that combination of history and art? At all? Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you're thinking of teaching or um, research. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of flexibility on how to approach that, uh, which will be interesting to talk to you with, uh, about at some point in the future. Looking forward to having you in class. And Emily, I don't want to, I don't want to throw too much in here, but art is such a wonderful partner to political science. Um, and history. If you study, for example, in political science, um, the human effects of war, you know, art can play a very powerful and therapeutic role in, in all kinds of different professions. Or if you think about, you know, ancient artifacts and, and their protected status, 
around the world. There's a lot of work going on in, in that field that really draws from people's knowledge who know about political science, history, and art. So there's a, there's a real nice way to bring those two together that will help you, you know, ask the right questions and, and maybe even make some discoveries uh, if you want to think about, you know, how they could be integrated. And I would say too, if you're interested in that political science piece, uh, student services, uh, where, where our like student activities are, we have groups on campus that, that, that kind of delve into politics. We've had students who intern with like political candidates. So if you're interested in any of that, kind of keep your ears out for student services and what we call our uh, student groups, because there'd be plenty of opportunities for that. Hey, Emily. Uh, one more quick thing. I noticed in the chat you mentioned that you might be interested in conservation or research in art. Um, so again, we have this amazing, amazing gallery. Uh, we also have a student gallery, but we also have work study positions that are associated with the gallery too, and that might be something for you to look into as well. Um, I can't wait to meet you face to face. And if you're camera shy, you can always either telephone uh, Professor Kowalik or, or me, or we can Zoom and it can be a one-on-one, -on -one, so you can be maybe less camera shy because a big group like this can work like that. So um, I really look forward to talking to you about art. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, absolutely, great question. Um, any, we had somebody pop in and I think they popped back out. Joshua, are you still here? Oh, there he is, you moved oh, yeah, I'm so here. sorry. Hey, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Good. Uh, I was going to ask a, a question, but I was going to wait for everybody to finish. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I want to get a degree in a nursing major in nursing eventually. What like art program should like I take in order to help me in nursing? Who wants to take that one? Any, any takers to start out? Josh, nursing. <laughs> are you talking about courses in the humanities that would help you with nursing? Is that what? Yeah. Well, first, I think our big answer is that we all emphasize empathy relating to people of different cultures and backgrounds, communication. So all of us have classes that would help you. I want to mention that in religion, we have a healthcare ethics class. Uh, that we specifically teach for nursing students and it's taught by a colleague who has a PhD in ethics and extensive experience in working with doctors and nurses in clinical settings. So and then I'm developing a global ethics course that talks about issues like access to health care and so forth. Uh, so we have specific classes that would be of interest to you and I think my colleagues all teach a wide variety of classes that would help you build up empathy and communication skills. Okay. Absolutely. And, and sorry, I'm getting my mute button confused. And Josh, when you talk to your first year student success advisor, your major will probably be pre-nursing. And then they will talk to you about um, classes within the humanities and our other divisions that will fill your general education requirements that when you go on um, and continue towards your bachelor's degree in nursing, it'll all fit together. So our advisors will help you there, but obviously feel free, there's contact information in the chat for everybody here in this room. Um, and so absolutely you can reach out to us individually and or go back and watch the recording of this, this. it's being recorded. And you can go back and watch and learn a little bit more about, they talk specifically about their classes and programs. And watch okay. That anytime but I know we're getting close to our time but I don't want to I don't want to close the room and end the session if anybody's got any other burning questions speak now forever hold your peace this isn't a question but Miss Sloan my mom says hi <laughs> <laughs> hi mom I love moms we got to make sure mom is connected with family connections we got to make sure your mom's in the getting family connections information We'll do that after the after the session. So, last thing to say, if I can, Steph, if please, that's okay. Please close us out, Amanda. Okay, I just wanted to kind of piggyback on something that Andrew put in the chat earlier about um, having um, 
a varied educational background, right? And how that's valued in so many different fields. And I just wanted to point out that that's one of my favorite things about humanities too, is that we have so many places where we connect and we um, work together. I think I look at all the faces on the screen and I think of all the different projects that we've, we've crossed out of our own disciplines into others to, to create projects. Kim and I have created uh, theater courses, an Appalachian theater course that um, focused on Appalachian murder ballads. It was so fun and students did all the research and they wrote the play themselves. And Dr. Browning and I have talked about different ideas for courses we'd like to teach together. And one semester, um, Pat and Petra and I brought in a photographer that talked to our art students and our writing students about telling stories with photographs. And so there's so many ways that we can work together to create brand new experiences that um, are outside of any particular field. And so I think that's really special about the humanities. Um, and those are the kinds of experiences that are gonna help you regardless of what field you go into, those hands-on projects that help you see things from various lenses. Absolutely. Dean Dugan, any closing thought? Gosh, I could never top Amanda. That was just beautiful. I, I think that summarized it really well. And I, I hope everybody feels they can reach out to whoever they'd like, however many as you'd like. We're certainly here to help and help you transition to Pike in the fall. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Make sure if you want to watch um, this recording, it'll be found exactly where you will put it in the same location where you found this link on social media in your, in your Canvas course. So we're going to leave with a big wave. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Adios. Bye. Adios. Bye. Que le va bien. Bye.